Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 529 for the 14th of ER in a regular year. So today we're going to discuss one of the most famous existential questions of all times, and we're actually going to flip it on its head. So what is this question? The question is, does God exist? So if you're listening to this podcast, if you study Tanya, most likely this might be a given to you. Like it might be like, well, yes, I believe God exists, but maybe some of you still do struggle with this question of does God exist? How can I be sure that God exists? Uh, And maybe you've spoken to friends, family members that struggle with this question of does God exist or does God not exist? And today, interestingly enough, the altar is actually going to flip this question on its head. We're going to begin chapter 48 and we're going to come to realize that the real question is not does God exist? The real question is do we exist and how is it that we exist? And we'll come to realize that our existence actually is not such a straightforward manner and it doesn't really make a lot of sense and it's actually a miracle that we exist. And the fact that we can live in such a reality where people sit and contemplate does God exist just points to how egocentric people can be and how living in this world, had the coarseness of this world and how self-involved we can become to the point that we actually, it's it's like a very, very, very myopic view of creation, a very myopic view of ourselves. But when we expand our vision, when we expand our consciousness, we actually come to realize that the much bigger question isn't about whether God exists or not. The fact that God exists is really a given. It's really, there's, there's obviously something bigger going on. We obviously have a root cause. Everything has a cause to it. The real question is how is it that we exist? How is it that from this infinitude, from this primal cause, which even science acknowledges as the big bang or, uh, the theory of everything that unifies everything in physics. Like if, if you really think about these things, then you start to acknowledge that there's obviously something bigger going on. There's obviously a much bigger cause to everything. And the real question, once again, is how is it that we exist? So let's get into the text and see how the Alter Rebbe brings up this question and what his resolution to this question is. And as we'll see in the coming episodes is uh, the real reason why we're bringing up this question now. And the real reason why we are discussing all of this is actually to help us come to a sense of loving God. And So this is going to be addressed in future episodes a little bit more, but just to give a little bit of a teaser of that right now is that what what we'll see is, is what we'll learn today is the existence of this world is no simple matter. And it's not something that just happens in a natural way in this like evolutionary manifestation of God. God actually had to really, really, really restrain himself and he had to really put himself aside. It's a very selfless act that God did in terms of allowing there to be this world which conceals God so much. And so as it's a natural thing to want to reciprocate. When somebody does a self selfless act towards you, whoever that person is, you naturally want to reciprocate with another selfless act with doing something nice for that person. And so this is the path that the ultra rabbit is leading us down is to make us realize just the extent of the selflessness that was what that God put into you creating the world. And the hope of this is to really arouse the sense of selflessness within us and to arouse the sense that we want to reciprocate to God. So here we go. So once again, we're beginning chapter 48. And so the altar says that if you take a thinking person 
any thinking person, so this is called a maskil in Hebrew, if a thinking person takes the time to really meditate upon the greatness of the Ein Sof Baruchu, this is the God, basically, so this is literally the infinite one, blessed be he, is the way that we refer to God, they'll come to realize that we don't just throw these terms around lightly. We don't just say, oh yeah, God is really infinite or he's so great or whatever. We actually mean this very, very literally. We mean that God's light and God's vitality that spreads forth out of him and it comes from within his will, his simple will. So it's really an expression of truly him is truly infinite. It truly has no end. It truly has no finitude, no limits at all. And it's actually united within his unity, with perfect unity. So God's light is truly united within him. And so thus, if this infinite light had created all the worlds in this way that was it by way of cause and effect in this like chain like way of hishtal shalos, it's called in in Hebrew. Um, if it if it directly descended from God without any contractions at all, and just in a way of like from level to level by way of cause and effect, the world as we know it could not exist at all. Because the world that we live in has limitations. The world that we live in live in has finitude, has order to it, has like different boundaries. And so we know that, for example, it's taught in the Gemara in Chagiga, chapter, uh, page 13a. It says, So from the earth to the firmament is a distance of 500 years. So this is a topic for another time, but basically 500 years journey. It says that, that that's how long it would take to go from the earth to the firmament in heaven. And so that's a limit, even though it's a very long time, it's still a limit. And so too, it's described that from one firmament to the ne next, and also the width of every firmament is also 500 years. So that means that there's very clear limitations to the universe. So even when we talk about in science, you know, the, the expanding universe or whatever, it's there's still limits to it. It's not infinite. And even the world to come, and even supernal Gan Eden, like heaven, which is the, the residence of the souls and the residence of the great Siddiquim and, and the actual souls themselves. And even the Malachim, even the angels, they all have limitations to them. They all have boundaries. So even when we think about the spiritual realm, so we often have this misconception that we think of physicality as being very bound and limited. And then spirituality, we think of as being very unlimited and boundless. And the ultra is saying that's not true. Even in spirituality, there's a concept of limits. There's a concept of boundaries. It may not be physical, but there are different types of boundaries to, to them. So how could this be? It's So the ultra says that, for example, there are boundaries to the amount that they can understand God um, that shines to them in terms of the way that he becomes vested in their chachma bina and dat and their wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So we've we've talked previously about how the souls in Gan Eden, what are they doing? They're sitting and they're contemplating and trying to understand God. So while they may not be physical be beings, they're still they still in terms of their understanding of God, they're understanding in a limited way, in the in a way that is in the capacity of their intellect. So that's a limit. And not only that, they're also, we know that they're enjoying God. That's what they're doing. They're, they're basking in the ray of the Shekhinah and they're really deriving a lot of pleasure out of godliness. Like they really see reality for what it is and everything. But nevertheless, their enjoyment and their pleasure is limited as well. And they could not be able to enjoy uh, uh, this joy and this pleasure in a truly infinite way, because if they would, then if it was truly infinite, then they would totally revert back to their source and they would become nullified in their source and they wouldn't exist anymore. So that's the end of this section. And so just to conclude, so basically this is really just the ultra bit introducing us to this concept here that he's going to elaborate upon further in the chapter, which is the greatness of how amazing it is that we exist, how it's not something we really should take for granted. So whenever people think about does God exist or whatever, it's like they're not asking the right question. It's like, obviously there is a cause. Obviously there's something that's beyond this all that brought us here. The real question is, how is it that we can exist? We can be so finite when we come from an infinite, infinite place. It's not a natural progression. Usually like begets like. So how is it that we can be so finite when God is so infinite? So the ultra bit 
alluded to it a little bit here where he brought up this idea of contraction, this idea of tzamtzum, and this is a big topic in Chassidus, and we're going to discuss more about this tzamtzum tomorrow uh, and take it from there. So I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast, hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzchak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.